In this video, I'm going to look at reacting amount calculations that involve solutions. So these are typically titration type calculations. Now, I've got a video about titrations, how to carry out a titration. So if you want to look at that as well, feel free. Um, but in this video, we're just going to concentrate on the actual calculations themselves. And like I've done with all of the other videos, so the mass video and the um, gases video, we've started off with the relevant triangle, formula triangle, and the one for solutions has the number of moles at the top of the triangle, concentration and volume. And the thing that you must remember about the volume is this must be in decimeters cubed. So we'll start off with a simple type of question. We've got some information up there about um, a titration experiment. So it's the reaction between a dilute acid and a dilute alkali. And basically we have to find out the concentration in moles per decimeter cubed of the acid. And we're also supplied with the balanced chemical equation for the reaction. So the first thing I've done is identified the known and the unknown substances in the equation. So you can see there the nitric acid is our unknown chemical. That's because we need to calculate its concentration. And the known substance is the sodium hydroxide because we are told the volume and the concentration. Just point out that this, um, this value here is the concentration. And you can tell by the units, moles per decimeter cubed. So the first thing we do is we calculate the moles of our known substance. And because this is a solution, the moles, the N term, remember, equals concentration times volume. The concentration is 0.15. And the volume, remember, that had to be in decimeters cubed. We're given it in centimeters cubed there. So we need to divide by 1,000, and that gives us this 0.018 decimeters cubed for our volume. So the moles are coming out at 0.0027. There's a nice easy one-to-one -one mole ratio between the two chemicals, the unknown and the known. So you can see there in the balanced equation, there aren't any numbers in front. So that means one mole of nitric acid is reacting with one mole of sodium hydroxide. So the moles of the unknown are the same as the moles of the known. And finally, we turn the moles into a concentration. And that's done by dividing the number of moles by the volume. Remember, we know the volume of the acid. So it's 25 centimetres cubed here. So the 0 0.0027 that we've just got from the previous line, that's divided by the volume of acid in decimetres cubed, remember which is 0.025, and that comes out at a concentration of 0.108 moles per decimeter cubed. Now, while we've got this information on the board, we may as well have a look at this extra question I've put on the board. Sometimes it's asked, so we'll, we'll deal with it in the video. So let's suppose the question asked for the concentration, instead of being in moles per decimeter cubed, what if it asked for it in grams per decimeter cubed? So we would still need to do all of this, but we've got another step to carry out now to get into these units here. So I'll give you a clue. You need to be thinking about the mass triangle now. We're going to use that in this step. So basically all we've got to do is turn these moles here into grams. And how do you do that? Well, we use the mass triangle, like I hinted at. So mass equals the number of moles multiplied by the MR. So we've already worked out the number of moles, so we had to do that anyway. The MR of nitric acid is 63. So that comes out at 6.804 grams per decimeter cubed. So just be aware, you may be asked to do something like that, and that's how you do it. So we'll have a look at this question now. Um, similar to the last one, um, but you'll see the mole ratio isn't quite as straightforward in this one. I'm asking for the final answer in grams per decimeter cubed as well. 
So we've got 15 cm cubed of the sulfuric acid and it needs 22.6 centimetres cubed of 0.75 moles per decimetre cubed potassium hydroxide solution and we have to calculate the concentration of the acid in grams per decimetre cubed as I've already said. There's the balanced equation so if you want to pause have a go and then play on. So the known and unknown have been identified and we've calculated the moles of known so that's concentration times the volume in decimeters cubed and that has come out at 0 0.01695 moles moles of unknown now we've got a one to two ratio here so we know the moles of this the potassium hydroxide so the equations tell us that for every two moles of potassium hydroxide we need one mole of sulfuric acid. And so therefore, if we know the moles of potassium hydroxide to be this many, we only need half as many moles of acid. And so we come out with this answer here. So we've turned the moles into a concentration now because we do know the volume of the acid. It's 15 cubic centimeters. So to get that into a concentration, we take the moles and we divide it by the volume, remember in decimeters cubed, and it comes out at 0.565 moles per decimeter cube. So we're nearly there, we've just got to turn that into grams per decimeter cube now. And of course we do that by multiplying the moles by the MR, that's going to give us the mass, that's the MR of sulfuric acid. So in grams per decimeter cube, the concentration of this acid is equivalent to 55.43 grams per decimeter cubed. So we'll finish off with this question. Now this one's quite a bit more difficult than the previous two, but I'm sure you'll get your head around it, no problem. So we're told that 2.65 grams of sodium carbonate is the formula for sodium carbonate, if you're not sure what it is. That's been dissolved in water and then it's been made up to 250 centimeters cubed. And then in a titration, 25 centimetres cubed of that solution is used and it's reacted with 22.5 centimetres cubed of hydrochloric acid. And we have to calculate the concentration of the acid in moles per decimetre cubed. And there's the balanced equation there for that titration reaction. Now, I'm a great believer in visualising um, information in questions. I think that's a great way to help you to actually see a way through to the end of the question. So I'm going to use these pictures here of various pieces of apparatus to try and sort of bring to life a little bit this rather drab, sort of confusing information uh, we've got in the question. So we know that there's been 2.65 grams of sodium carbonate that's been dissolved in water and made up to 250 cm cubed. So that'll have been done in something like this. This is a volumetric flask of capacity 250 cm cubed. So straight away we can see that, well, we've got a mass. We can work out the MR of this. We can work out how many moles of sodium carbonate we've got inside this flask. So we'll do that first. So you can see there I've divided the 2.65 grams by the MR of the um, sodium carbonate and we've got a value here of 0.025 moles of sodium carbonate inside that flask. So then what they've done is they've taken 25 centimetres cubed from here and put it into this conical flask which they've then done a titration in. So how many moles of sodium carbonate will be in here now? Well, we know the moles of sodium carbonate in this 250 cm cube flask. Well, we've taken a tenth of that out, so we've taken a tenth of the moles out. So that means that in this flask here, we must have 0.0025 moles of sodium carbonate. So then the titration was carried out, and the, the hydrochloric acid would obviously have been in the burette and we're told that 22.5 centimetres cubed of this acid was used. 
So what could we work out now? Well, we know the moles of sodium carbonate that's in that flask. We've got a mole ratio in the equation between the sodium carbonate and the hydrochloric acid. So effectively, this is our known value. So we know this about it. So obviously the moles of hydrochloric acid must be twice the number of moles of sodium carbonate because of the 1 to 2 ratio in the equation. So that's obviously 0 0.005 moles of hydrochloric acid. You can see there from the 1 to 2 ratio. So what do we know now about the hydrochloric acid? We know the moles and we know the volume used. We can work out concentration with that and that's what we're after. And that's coming out as a value of 0 0.22 moles per decimeter cubed. And how did we do that? We took the moles of the acid and we divided it by the volume in decimeters cubed. So at first, questions like that don't look very nice, but if you um, just visualize what's going on at each stage, you will be picking up marks all the time in the questions. And then hopefully there'll come a point where the sort of the, um, the scales are lifted from your eyes and you can see, ah, yes, I can see what to do now. Hopefully. So just as in the previous videos, I'll finish with the sequence of steps. So the first thing you do is you identify the known and unknown substances in the balanced equation. Once you've done that, you would calculate the moles of the known substance. And because these are solutions, the number of moles equals the concentration multiplied by the volume. Remember, it must be in decimeters cubed. Once we know the moles of known, we can use the mole ratio in the equation between the known and the unknown to work out the moles of the unknown. And then finally, you'd normally be asked to calculate the concentration of the unknown solution, and that's done by concentration equals moles divided by volume, again in decimeters cubed. And I've just added at the bottom there, if you're asked to work out the concentration in grams per decimeter cubed, you would then feed in the value you get for the moles per decimeter cubed, so effectively your answer to the green step. That feeds into the mass equals moles times MR, and whatever the chemical is, you multiply the moles by the MR, and you get the number of grams that would be needed for that concentration per decimeter cubed.